thank you for staying with us. Um, we're still talking loss, losing a loved one and coping with loss. Uh, we're being joined by Chudeji Denwo. He's the founder of Joy Incorporated, whose vision is building happier, flourishing young Africans. Thank you so much, Chudeji, for thank joining you. us. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, I'm so happy that finally you have decided to grace our... <laughs> the Lord's doing. <laughs> you know, um, you, you brought a whole new dimension for me when it when it comes to this topic of grief mm -hmm. when um with the passing of um your good friend uh, to mm -hmm. when you when you did that video you know what what it did to me instead of thinking and probably crying mm -hmm. or whatever you brought something beautiful that mm -hmm. i said okay mm -hmm. I, whatever she is she's happier where she is and mm -hmm. all that because we're able to see her beyond beyond death mm, mm. you know so why did you decide to to start this um this initiative i'll right. call it the joy incredible i mean it's really simple though. um too many, too many people are unhappy um and needlessly so i mean it, it doesn't mean that there's not enough in the world to be sad about there is and it doesn't mean that their unhappiness is not valid it is and you don't disrespect people's feelings or people's reactions. But it's just that there is a better way to deal with life's ups and downs. And it came from my own personal experience. I went through, a, I've spoken about this often, a major depressive episode in 2016. And I very briefly, very, very briefly, thought Please about do. taking my own life. Please do. Um, oh my yes. Um, and, you know, that began to make, after I recovered, well, while I was recovering from that, I began to read up about depression and Can unhappiness. I ask why? Well, I didn't actually thought attempt. I just thought yes. about it. Why did you I mean, think about it? So, um, so depression is a very um, depression is I call depression a bastard. Like an abyss. Mm. Yes, it's exactly. My uh, mentor, Fela Jotoy, says it's like the value of the shadow of death, mm. where it's not actually death, but it feels like death. And I always say that uh, depression is like having darkness in your soul locked in somewhere, there. and then you are living inside the darkness that is inside your soul. And so you, you can't even know you're you living inside yeah. it. So when you're in that space, nothing, everything that makes sense doesn't. You know, um, life doesn't look the same way as it looks to every other person. You can be in the midst of joyful, happy, excited people. And yet you can people. see it. And you can't just feel it. It's just so nothing. it has a psychological effect. Yes, your mind is warped, essentially. Your mind is not seeing things. It's like seeing yellow and thinking it's blue. Mm -hmm. And people are saying to you, but it's yellow, it's yellow. But you're like, but I can only see blue. It makes no difference. Yes, and when you're there, suicide is a very natural progression. Because all you want to do is to escape mm. the darkness. That's all you want to do. You just want to escape it. You just want to find something else that will give you Whichever yeah. way, yes. So that's that's. that's so that was why that's you what started. led to that. Yes. Yeah. So coming out of coming out of that, reading about it, learning about it, praying about it, all of those things, um, led. Um, I began to discover a lot of things about that I didn't know about happiness, about living a joyful life, about surviving adversity, about dealing with pain and loss and all of that. And I thought, oh my God, there's been so much research about this, so much uh, thought about this from like 2,000 years ago, so much uh, neuroscience behind all the things we've always known. Yeah. Um, why don't more people know about this? I mean, one of some days I'm discouraged, I'm not discouraged, I'm sad that I haven't been able to send this message to many more people because I hear people say things that I know, actually that's not true. The science on that's already clear. You don't have to suffer like that. And I just need more people to know. How did you How did you come out of the depression? Did somebody help you? Or did well, you there were a number three. You know, like, okay. So I'm worried about saying this because we live in a very religious society mm. where yeah. people use religion as a crutch mm -hmm. and uh, religious leaders flatten complexity. But the, for me personally, prayer was the way that I came out of depression. But prayer, I don't mean like Jesus came and talked to me. You saw the and light. All of that. No, it's not the, it's not the, nothing really deep, nothing really esoteric. Mm. It's that um, meditation is meditation and mindfulness is one of the the most scientifically validated tools for clearing out the debris of your mind, so to speak. And there is a tradition of prayer that is meditative, and that's the one where you're not demanding things, you're not asking so for a car, just asking just for a house, you're just talking to, to, to God, as mm. it were in this case, and you're listening as well. 
You know, and that's not the prayer tradition that I was born in. The prayer tradition I was born in being a Pentecostal Nigerian As Christian. Holy Ghost is fire. Fire is dead. <laughs> God it's give me money. Yes, all Let of that. my enemies die. All so, of those things. So, you know, meditative prayer really was really helped. It opened me up. So it means that from our quote of the day, when he mm, says you should yes. meditate, yes, it's he's, actually, he's actually right. Yes, it's a rather drastic, and it, it you need to go through. You need to learn and learn and learn yes. to get to the point where you understand what he's saying. Yes, but he's right because mm. if you meditate. On the, the essential, the essential nothingness of being, then it 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 gives you perspective to confront whatever comes your way. Mm. And when you've dealt with the fear of death, and yes. you've dealt with the fear of Absolutely. pain, then every other thing compared to that can be put can in seem proper to be perspective. Nothing, yeah. So how did you find joy mm. in amidst that pain to mm. be able to pull yourself out well, of first, that? When you're coming out of the pain, you don't find joy. When you're coming out of when I come out of the pain, you just find understanding first. Yeah. So you just understand that this is not the end of the world. Mm -mm. And that there is another side. And then you just find a little opening. Something just so for me it was I went to spend um, uh, an evening with a mention fellow Durotoy and he just spoke to me and spoke to me and spoke to me. And he didn't speak to he didn't try to convince me, he didn't try to he didn't even try to pray, even though he's a pastor, the thing in the way. He just tried to understand. And that just opened a small door of light in the darkness of the depression. Mm. And from then, I could now push mm. and push and push. And so what he did was just give me something, a word that I could hold on to, you know. And then when, you, when I got that, then I began to climb out, climb out, climb out, climb out. And that takes a process. And then suddenly one day, that you've climbed out into light, yes. <laughs> you know, because you just keep doing the thing. You just keep. So for me, it was like, okay, I kept, began to meditate on the things he had said. And I was reading other things, and just daily, Daily doing that process. So was that, that the birth we of birth? Was mm. that the birth of joint? Yes, that was the birth. Yeah. By the time I came out to the other side, yes. So we birth. understand that you also dealt with loss. You yes. know, your father. Yes. Oh, yes. Passing. Yeah. You know, can you walk us through that process? Because you see, a lot of times people just see death, you know, and mm. they just feel, oh, it's. Yeah, we understand that is a natural thing that mm. must happen, mm. but people can still get over mm. certain things like you're never ready for it yeah even though you know i lost to happen. Um, someone very dear to me mm. she, she was my sister-in-law until right. tomorrow yeah. every time i think about her it's yeah. still it's still hurtful yeah. you know i think about her and I, and I know that i mean so so sometimes when things happen i wish oh i wish you know this she was here you know so yeah. how did you deal with that well i mean i thought i lost my father long before i understood yes. some of the principles <laughs> of joy and to be honest now that when you think talk about it i don't think i have fully confronted the death of my father wow. which is weird because i help people go through you know wow. I'm, I'm not a counselor i'm not a psychiatrist i'm not licensed to do anything but what we work with uh, psychiatrists at the joy yeah. hub the lead psychiatrist dr abiri there's been your green day psychologist um, but we teach the things that don't need clinical help for yeah, that so, are yeah. basically self-help tools and i've helped people with that um, and for some reason, I mean, I, th I guess it's because my father's, I've, I've, uh, it's taken time, so I've basically worked through it. Um, but I think that I still need to sit down and just fully confront his death. I've done an exercise. There's an exercise that is taught by a lady, a self-help teacher called Louise Hay, about uh, uh, I'm letting your father go that I've done. And that has been incredibly helpful. It's a self-help tool. Um, Part of the reason why I haven't dealt with my father's death, and I even can't deal with it now, is because um, there are certain truths about his passing that involve other people. Wow. And those people aren't comfortable with that conversation being had. And I understand why. We live in a society that's not very empathetic. And so people are afraid of sharing things that make people disrespect the memory of the person. Yeah. Um, and so that, you know, the, the elements of his passing that I want to share, I think that it will help other people. I think it would help me. Um, but I haven't been able to share it yet. And that's one of the things about grief. Talking about grief is one of the most important things about dealing with grief. The ability to fully vocalize and language Thank you. Every, single, every single thing that you are feeling. Silence is a killer. Silence is a killer because whatever you are silent about, you are allowing to grow without the light of understanding. You've not been able to process it, language it, understand but it, sometimes deal that's with the it. best way for you to be able to handle yeah. it because you don't want to interact with this set of people yeah. because you want to be able to deal with it before yeah. you're able to interact but with But at least them. language it to yourself. 
tell yourself at least language is here. I think discussing yeah. all the, the research. I think the best way to do that, I think mm. the best way based from my own experiences mm. is you cry it all out. You don't mm. need to language all yeah. of it. You mm. just cry it Crying it all out is language. As, is in, uh, cry is in language. Because there's, there are some therapists that say um, if you don't find the words, find the sounds. Mm. <laughs> okay. Do find you, the feelings, find, find the, the feelings, emotions. Find the, you know, they say grunt, you want to grunt. Yeah. You know? so you can but <clears> find an outlet. Emotions are not supposed to be locked up inside, they're supposed to be pushed out. And you don't Just have to say it to people that you don't trust, like you're saying, mm -hmm. but at least with yourself, process them. But you That's know, today, what the research says. So now, we, we read um, in the news today, the man that drowned in the pool. I just heard about that news just now. I mean, and so also, yeah. there was a ghastly motor accident. Yeah. You know, so what, where I'm going at, mm. and all there are different kinds of, there are horrible. different kinds of death. Yeah. So do you think that sometimes it is difficult to cope? Because if mm. I hear you correctly about mm. your father, do you think it's difficult to cope with certain kinds of death because yeah. of the circumstances? There are two kinds of Some are traumatic. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there are, I'm, I'm very, when it comes to personal trauma, I'm very careful about it because um, trauma is a very delicate subject for very many people. Very delicate. But I mean, there is this, there are two forms of it. One form is that um, yes, it dep depending on the kind of person you are, depending on the kind of experiences you've had, depending on the kind of death that happens, it can hit you in different ways. If you're able to stay with the person, spend weeks with the person while the person was slowly fading away in sickness, you're able to find the time to process your feelings. If it was an accident, it might be difficult. So of course, different people handle trauma differently based on the intensity of the trauma, their own mental and emotional states of being, the kind of support they have. So that's, you know, and anyhow a person chooses to deal with trauma is legitimate. As long as a person isn't hurting anybody else or committing a crime. So however a person chooses to handle trauma, death, loss, grief, it's allowed. So however, on the other mm -hmm. hand, the research and the evidence from you know years and years of understanding people who have gone through post-traumatic stress disorders and all of that shows that any form of death can be processed, accepted, and recovered from. Any form? Any. Hmm. People have had their children hacked to death Some and have people. proceeded out of it. So it is possible, not that it is easy, or that you should demand it, hmm. you have to recover. You know, Nigeria, well, I really it do. Definitely it definitely takes time. It often takes time. It often okay. takes time. So but tell us what you do, sorry, in um, Joy Incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, now, people that are going through grief, mm -hmm. what exactly is the process? Do they come to the hub, or yeah. how do you how reach out? So first of all, the hub is open to everybody. Anybody, you know, can walk into the can call, fix an appointment, and see a psychiatrist. It's free to be paid, or no, no. For the first consultation, it's free. Okay. You know, so we have a lot of volunteer psychiatrists who are giving us their time, and then it's incredible. So it's free for your first consultation, and sometimes even second and third, depending on the in, on the case. Some of these psychiatrists and psychologists are open to doing that. So that's the first and most important part of it, because we want them to see professionals. Um, however, Joy Inc., so that's at the hub. And even if you don't want to see a psychiatrist, you just want someone to listen to you. Mm -hmm. we are, next year, we are spending every month training listeners. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to just give you the capacity. You don't need to be a professional. You need to have because the capacity of patient to and just patiently listen, listen non-judgmentally to people and don't you don't need to interject. interrupt you don't need to interrupt you don't need to bring your opinions your judgments your, your feelings bias. your biases your whatever sometimes you just need to sit down and most times you just need to listen and listen to people so that they can go through their own process and so we are training listeners which is a big problem in Nigeria people are very quick to say what they think <laughs> <laughs> about about your your challenges, um, so we want to train people to listen and to empathetic listening, mindful listening. We want to do that, so that's going to be happening next year. But now you can just go and sit down. You can just go and watch videos, watch books about all kinds of challenge, emotional challenges that you're dealing with. So that's that. But then, then we have, so those are the three things, and those are really important because most of the people that need help can't afford it. Mm -hmm. But then for people who can afford it, we have a number of events. The popular, most popular of them is the Joy Retreat where we've helped people with a psychiatrist in the room sometimes work through grief, work through loss, work through trauma. Any kind of grief or this? Any kind. So there's a, there's a self-help, and we make it clear that these are self-help, do-it-yourself tools. They're tools that um, um, a lot of teachers have used over, the, over decades that have been incredibly useful for many people. The person whose work we use, a lady called Katie Bryan, She's an American teacher who has helped a lot of people recover from incredible loss and pain. And it's just really four simple questions that she uses to help them work through. So she doesn't give them any solutions. It's not, she's not giving them drugs. It's just, I want you to take these questions and sit with them. 
and they by yourself will lead you to the freedom and peace that you're is it within for. a period of time or well the retreat is a three-day event okay. you know and then after that so the first the first emotional first aid is done at those retreats people are able to ask questions and then after that we give them resources that they can use personally. So and you also, don't go home for three days or you, no, you go don't home. go no no you are there for three days. Oh okay like a camp. Days. It's like a camp. Okay. But it's a more fun camp. Do they pay? Yes, oh. that is paid for. That is a paid for <laughs> <laughs> that's a paid for okay. one for people who can of yeah who can afford that. Um and, and if it, 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 do you, do you need a lot of money to be able to afford it, or is it? Sadly, yes. Uh, <laughs> not, not a lot of money. I like that you're honest. Sadly, yes, because it's a lot of work, and you need yeah. to be in a place of in, of extreme comfort to do some of the exercises but, that we do but, at those things. That's why we have the free ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why we have. So the free you have ones. to first of all go and tap into the free ones. Yes. Yeah, so so if, you, if you can't afford those big run, ones, because we have like you know a few minutes left. Yeah. You know, people, Funke Akinele, for instance, recently yeah. lost her dad yes. because she's in the eye of the public. Yes. You know, I want you to address this because right. a lot of times people feel that because they're celebrities and mm. all of those, there's a certain kind of expectation. Mm. I mean, she already had something that she was doing, like something major, something mm. big. So why would you, why would people just assume that because she lost her dad, mm. her life has to, because people just feel your life has to stop or you have to do this. Sometimes, can you help me tell some people that sometimes even doing your work in itself is therapeutic to healing? Because we see um, um, uh, Funke Buckner, I, I was really hoping she, we could get her. Yeah. She's always dancing. Yes. It's encouraging somebody yeah. that she loved her sister so, so much, much, but she's she's trying to, to get deal over, with deal with that situation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's her way of, you know, yeah. coming out of the grief, you know, dancing. She, like, she did everything that the sister loves to do. And Funke um, Akindele as well, she's working and people are expecting you just lost your dad why are you and still you know why can't you wallow in yeah. pain or whatever so tell us this is the first this is the most important skill a person <coughs> must learn in their lives the ability to love yourself irrespective of what anybody else is saying yeah it's the most important skill you can learn it's a skill the ability to love yourself even if everybody thinks you are the worst person in the world uh -uh. that's the principal thing and i think funke kindle has that and has learned that remember She's that funke kindle has gone through a public scandal of course many years ago with the yeah. marriage where these same people were there to tell her how to live her life her and life, who to yeah. marry and how exactly to marry the person and what kind of wedding to do mm. so she's experienced with dealing with the mob you know, and when you've done that, it gives you a sense of inner peace because you know that you can survive gossip. Mm. So I'm very happy for her. That's one of the times when adversity has prepared you. So she's not going to be bothered by all of this, I think. However, that, that skill of loving yourself is important because people are going to say what they're going to say. Regardless. These are people who are dealing with a lot of things. These people are dealing with tragedy, pain, Everything. loss. It, it, so just it human beings you. like you go on twitter somebody says something very nasty you have why are you upset by it i can understand why but really do you know the person's history their oh. psychological history do you know what they are dealing yes, some people states. are using her as a a place to lash out to lash out yeah that's what they are doing some people are using her to walk through their own fears yeah. celebrities are or their own, challenges, or their own challenges and so for the celebrity you have to ignore them if you want to engage you have to help them look for help no, that's yeah, the truth. Yeah. But for you yourself, there is nothing. You're not going to convince them. You're not going to persuade them. <laughs> you know, it takes therapists five years to get people to overcome particular challenges. You want to do that with a tweet? You want to do that by going to your... You know, sometimes I see celebrities go to their comment box and try to convince somebody. I'm like, wow. So I'm happy that she's owning... So I'm happy that she's owning, yes. Owning her self-love yeah. and focusing. Yeah. I think that's for me... That's the, what it is. She yeah. has to do that. That gives her the immunity yeah. to handle, to handle any, any emotional any trauma, yeah. any emotional drama yeah. that people are bringing, bringing her at her. Because you cannot... You can't change them. You can only change yourself. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't take the question, but I'll get it from you after you. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Thank you so much. You. Um, for you. whoever is out there, if you're going through grief, I mean, today's um, organization, Joy Inc., just check them on Instagram. They can help you. But we had to bring this topic because even in the light of all the celebrations and the Christmas, it's important mm -hmm. for us to remember that there are people that are grieving currently and yeah. we want them to get help. You know, So we're happy. Thank you so Thank much you. again Thank for coming. And uh, remember to watch our repeat broadcast Friday Saturdays and Sundays at 3 p.m. You can catch a repeat of this show that's tomorrow at 3 p.m. Then you can also watch um, episodes on YouTube. And our quote again, so you need to meditate on <laughs> the inevitable death. <laughs> um, meditation on the inevitable death should be performed daily. Every day, 
every day one should meditate on being carried away by surging waves, mm -mm. falling from <laughs> thousands foot cliff, mm -mm. or dying of a disease. Mm -mm. Well, Mariam doesn't want to do that, but mm -mm. <laughs> I mean, it's therapeutic. I like, just want to think of like, my bed. <laughs> I can do that one. You start from where she can. From Isi Mariam and I. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow live at 8 p.m. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.